Hello there! Welcome to the user interface guide, building your own customized UI from scratch. My name is Tusky, and today we will discuss the greatest add-on in the universe, Weak Horrors. Now, I just want to clarify that this guide will assume that you have already set up a basic user interface if you haven't, and you wish to do so, then I suggest clicking the annotation on screen now, which will take you to my guide about setting up a customized user interface from scratch. I would also suggest going over part 2 of the UI guide, which will take you through setting up a few add-ons to help display information. Weakoras is an incredibly strong add-on that allows for the displaying of specific pieces of information. It can be set up to display just about anything. As you can see, I use it extensively to show cooldowns, totems, trinket procs, spell durations and reminders, but the add-on could do so much more than that. Want a reminder that you're missing a spell? Want to know when a trinket's going to proc? A low health or mana reminder? Energy, mana or a rage bar? Shadow orbs? Combo points? Totems? Stances? Auras? Runes? And loads more. Weak Auras can handle it. Now, Weak Auras relies mostly upon its user's knowledge and skill. It's a very smart add-on. The more you know about it, and the further you're willing to delve, the more you can get out of Weak Auras. I want to start by stating that I am not a master of using Weak Auras. The add-on is incredibly complex, and I find that I can get a lot out of it without delving into the very, very complicated stuff. So that's what this video will focus on. It will assume that you're a beginner, and it will take you through the process of setting up different weak horrors to help present important information. We'll start by making a simple resource bar for our class, going over the various aspects of creating weak horrors in the process. Type slash weak horrors or slash wa to access the menu. Here is your weak horrors menu. Everything you'll need to do, you'll do here. On the left is a list of every single one of your weak horrors, and on the right is your edit box. At the top of the list, you'll see a new button. Weak Horrors normally defaults to this when you open it, but if it hasn't, hit it. You now have a list of different Weak Aura types. They're all well labelled and will start with a progress bar. This creates a bar that will move with animations. You have now created the Weak Aura. Feel free to rename it to Resource Bar, Mana Bar, Rage Bar, Energy Bar, whatever you'd like. If you ever want to rename, duplicate, copy, export or delete a Weak Aura, just right click on it on the list. Here, I'll right click and rename the Weak Aura. Now you'll notice that the bar has appeared on the middle of the screen. You can click to drag it wherever you'd please, and by mousing to the edge of its selection box and then dragging, you can change the width and the height. By dragging the corner buttons, you can change both the width and the height at the same time. For now, let's put it in the center of the screen. Let's actually edit it now. The first thing you want to do with any weak aura is to figure out what triggers it. At the top, go straight to trigger. Weak Auras defaults to a single trigger, which should be fine for most Weak Auras you create, but if you want multiple triggers, you can add them. For now, let's stick with the default one. Hit the drop-down menu for Type. Select Status. You'll get a new drop-down menu below. Hit that, and you'll be presented with a long list of options. Here, select Power. This will automatically link the bar to your main power resource, be it Mana, Energy, Rage, or Runic Power. A few notes. First, you can change the power type if you want by hitting the power type button and selecting it. This is helpful if you want to track different types of power, but generally you can leave this off. Secondly, you can change the trigger's status so that it only triggers if you have a certain amount of power. To do so, either hit the power button if you want to type the exact amount in, or power percentage to work with percentages. Here, I set it to only display when I'm at or below 50% mana. To test the weak aura, Close the menu down, and in my case, I'll lower my mana to below 50%. As you can see, the bar appears as soon as I go below 50% mana. If you didn't set the power trigger, then your bar will appear at all times. Next, let's set loading options. Go to load at the top. This menu lets you change when the weak horror loads. When a button is empty, it is disabled entirely. When the text is green and the button is dashed, it will only enable the trigger in combat. When the text is red and the button is also dashed, it will only trigger outside of combat. Here I'll set my resource bar weak aura to only appear while in combat. Another note here is that you can set your weak auras to only trigger based on player name. This is a great way to do things if you use the add-on on different characters. That way, one character's weak auras won't appear on another character's screen. There have been plenty of times when I've logged onto my paladin to level him, and Weak Horrors has said to me, Hey, wait a minute, why don't you have your lightning shield on? Now let's fiddle with the display. Go back to display. Here, take your time to fiddle with all of the different settings. For a resource bar, you don't generally need an icon, so I'm going to disable it. I'll change the texture to something a bit cleaner, like Voodoo Flat. When it comes to the left text and the right text, these control what text actually appears on the bar itself. 
If you want it to automatically do its thing, then mouse over it and see what you have available. Type the percentage symbol, then one of the letters associated with that setting. Here, I'll just type in Manor, which will set it to be Custom, and on the right text, I'll use percentage %P for progress on the right. Scrolling down, you'll see a ton of settings to tweak the display settings. They're all cosmetic, take your time to look through all of them. If you can dream of it, it will probably appear here. Now that we have a resource bar, let's make a cooldown icon. This will be an icon that tells us the duration of a big, potent buff that we put on our character. Choose your favourite class's buff. For me, I'll use Shamanistic Rage, as it's a defensive cooldown that I use as often as I can. Start by making a new weak aura, and then select Icon. Once again, move it into position. You'll notice that your other bar has disappeared. To change this, just go to the top of your list and look at the loaded menu. It has a small eye next to it. It defaults to half closed, meaning that only the weak aura you're editing will be displayed. Instead, change it to wide open by clicking on it. This will display all of your weak auras and make sure that there's no overlapping. Now, back to our new weak aura. Rename it to the name of your cooldown, and then add the word cooldown to the end, to signify what it's tracking. Go to trigger. You'll want to leave it as aura, as the buff is actually an aura. Keep the unit on player. Type in the name of your buff as precisely as you can using capital letters, apostrophes and spaces. If you typed it in correctly, your icon should immediately appear to be the button for that buff. Next, go to load and set it as before to only appear on that character. And in this case, I'm not going to set it to only appear in combat, so I'm going to leave it be. Back to display. This is where icons can really shine. I'm going to hit the cooldown button. This will, despite the wording, display the duration of the buff. Change the icons options as you wish. So we've gone over displaying a buff on ourselves, some big cooldown that we can use to blow things up, but what about buffs that we need on all of the time? What about the ones that we sometimes forget? Simple enough. If I turn off my lightning shield and my flaying tongue weapon, you'll see that I have weak auras in place to remind myself to rebuff, which is good because sometimes I can be a bit forgetful. To set these up, create a new icon, call the weak aura missing, then type the name of the buff, and under the trigger tab, keep the type on aura, type in the name of the buff, keep the unit on player and the aura type to buff, and then hit the inverse button. This will display the weak aura when the buff is not present, reminding you to keep yourself buffed up. To do this with a weapon enchant, like a shaman weapon in view, just change the type to status and go to weapon enchant. Change the weapon to main hand or off hand if you want to track that too, and then type in the name of the weapon enchant. Here, it's flame tongue. Next up, let's talk trinkets. These are important in high-end play, you need to know when they'll activate, how long they're up for, and when to expect them to appear again. So let's create some weak auras to track trinkets. As you can see here, I have weak auras set up for my two trinkets, my metagem proc, and my weapon enchant proc. Let's start with your favourite trinket. Go to a training dummy, unequip your other trinkets, and smack at the dummy for a bit until your trinket procs. Mouse over the buff and make a mental note of what the buff is called. It's often very different from the name of the actual trinket. Next, create your weak aura. I prefer using progress bars here. Name the weak aura. Under the trigger tab, keep the type as aura, type in the name of the buff you've noted down, and then set up the display. Once you've done that, duplicate the weak aura by right clicking on it and hitting duplicate, and change the name of the aura to each of the various trinket, metagem, and weapon enchants until you have them all sorted. Another tip, the name of the buff is Jade Spirit for the weapon enchant. Now we have our trinkets displaying when they're up. That's great and all, but what about the internal cooldowns? Sometimes you might need to line up your big cooldowns with trinket procs for maximum firepower. Simple enough, we'll dive into a new section of weak auras to sort this out. Duplicate the trinket whose internal cooldown you want to track. Don't move it, we'll save some space using transparency. Under the trigger tab, change the type to event. Change the event to combat log. This will open a whole bunch of new options. Keep the message prefix as spell. Change the message suffix to aura removed. Enable the source unit and change it to player. Enable the destination unit and change that to player too. Now, type in the name of the buff associated with that trinket, not the name of the trinket itself. This will make the weak aura activate when an aura, like the trinket buff, is removed from the player, which it is when the trinket finishes its proc. Now we want to know what the internal cooldown of the trinket actually is. This is simple enough. 
Mouse over it on your character tab. It will display a cooldown in brackets. If it has no cooldown here, it uses a different system than internal cooldowns and cannot really be tracked. So don't worry about making a weak aura for it. Now you shouldn't set the cooldown in the trigger window of the weak aura to be exactly the same as the trinket, as this will make it overlap with your trinket buff bar. Instead, subtract the trinket's duration from the cooldown. So, for my purified bindings of Immersius, the 115 second cooldown minus the 20 second duration is 95 seconds. Now, when your trinket's buff ends, the internal cooldown weak aura will appear, keeping things nice and clean. Next, I'll go to display and set the opacity to be a touch lower than normal, so as not to make the bars too emphasized. I want it to be emphasized when the trinket is actually up so I can see it better. You might want to consider using inverse on the display tab to make the bar fill up, making it more obvious that it's the internal cooldown. Just as a note, if you're not sure if something has an internal cooldown, just Google it and search places like Wowhead and the Battle.net forums to see what other people have found out. From what I've seen, the DPS caster Metagem and the Jade Spirit weapon do not have internal cooldowns that need tracking, and if the trinket does not have a cooldown at the end of the tooltip, it generally doesn't have an internal cooldown either. Next up, we'll create a weak aura to display one of your debuffs on the enemy. A debuff that you might need to track. For me, it's Flame Shock. Hit New, then Progress Bar, name it to whatever your debuff is, go to Trigger, leave it as Aura, but this time, change the unit to Target. Hit Aura Type and change the type to Debuff. This way you can track the debuff on your target. Fiddle with the settings as you did before, changing the triggers to only trigger on your character, and changing the display options until you're happy with your weak aura. Now, just note that as far as I'm aware, weak auras can't track things like dots or CC on enemies that aren't either your target, your focus target, or your group or yourself. I would suggest going with a dot tracker of some sort if you want that. However, I find that being able to track my flame shock on my target is more than enough, and tidy plates handle showing the duration on enemies I don't have targeted. Let's talk about cooldowns now. As you can see, when I activate my synapse springs on my gloves, I'm shown a 10 second long buff, which we've already gone over how to create with weak auras, and then a longer, transparent, 50 second long weak aura that displays its cooldown. When the cooldown reaches 15 seconds, the weak aura becomes opaque and more noticeable. I actually use multiple weak auras here. You can apply this to any of your class or item cooldowns, but here I'll go through the process of creating a cooldown weak aura for an item. Create your progress bar or icon as explained earlier, and under trigger, go to status, then cooldown progress item. If it's a spell you want to track, go to cooldown progress spell. At this point you can continue as per usual and show the cooldown as you wish, editing the load and display options until the weak aura is ready. However, I don't want a big icon in the middle of my screen for 50 odd seconds, as I'll either get distracted by it or get used to it, and I don't want either of those. I want it to be noticeable when it needs to be so. So to do this, activate remaining time, and then change the operator to less than or equal to, and then the number of seconds on the cooldown. Since the cooldown of my synapse springs is 60 seconds, and the first 10 are taken up by the spell itself, I typed in 49 seconds, giving myself a second gap between the two to make sure there was no overlapping. Create the rest of the weak aura as per usual, but in the display tab under colour, I'm going to change the opacity to be kind of low. At this point you'll have a transparent weak aura from 49 seconds to 0 seconds. Now let's create the second weak aura to display an opaque icon for the last 10 seconds of the cooldown. But to save time, we can just right click on the weak aura we just created, hit duplicate, rename the weak aura, and then start working from there. The duplicate feature copies everything remember, so it's great for this kind of thing, never forget that it exists. Now let's change a couple of things with our weak aura. Start with display, and then change the opacity under the collar box to be full. Now, go to Trigger. Under remaining time, change the operator to less than or equal to 15 seconds. Now, when the cooldown has 15 seconds or less remaining, the icon will become opaque and more noticeable. If you want, you can change the icon's display to be a different icon, or to be more noticeable by increasing its size a little bit. Now, there are a few more things that you might find useful with weak auras. First is the model section. This works just like the icon choice when creating a new weak aura, but instead of an icon, it will show an actual 3D model on your screen. I don't use this myself, but it might come in handy in some scenarios. Other than the selection and editing of the model, this section works just like any other weak aura in terms of triggering and loading. Second is grouping. 
This is very helpful for weak auras that are very similar. For my shaman, I've set up multiple weak auras for my totems, and these are grouped together for organizational purposes. A group which can be created from the new section allows for multiple weak auras to be moved as one. Simply create a group, then find the weak aura you want in it and hit the small arrow on the right side. Then click on the group and it will move. I find this is also a great way to filter out add-ons by which alt is using them, allowing me to separate my shaman and my paladin weak auras. Third is Texture and Progress Texture. These are essentially icons, but instead they take the form of textures from World of Warcraft available for use in weak auras. On the display tab, hit the choose button and make sure to use the drop down menu on the top left to find more textures. A progress texture is the same as a normal texture, except that it will animate itself to show the progress of a cooldown, buff, debuff or whatever else you assign it to. Fourth, if you're unsure where your particular trigger may be for odd things like totems, combo points or other things, make sure you look through each of the available types of triggers and through their drop down menus. You can generally figure out what each does by clicking on it and seeing what options are available for it. Fifth and finally, let's talk about importing. Some guides on the internet may have weak aura imports to use. This is a system that allows you to share your weak auras with others. Generally, this will look like a massive string of random numbers and letters, but in reality, it's a code for a particular weak aura. If you find a weak aura import that you want to use, just copy the entirety of the import string, go to weak auras in game, use the import option on a new weak aura, and then paste the import string into it and hit done. This will create for you a new weak aura with exactly the same settings as the one who created the import. A warning! There have been cases where malicious code has been included in imports into weak auras. Be wary of what you import and try to judge the validity of the site you got the import from. This is why knowing how to create your own weak auras is great. You generally won't need to use import. If you want to share your weak auras with others, just right click on the weak aura, hit export and you'll be given your own string to copy paste to others. To conclude, weak auras as you can probably see is a very powerful add-on. It has so much potential, and really we've only just scratched the surface. This guide will be more than enough to cover your basic needs, but there will be plenty of fancy and flashy ways to get things done with weak auras. I won't cover them here because A, this is a guide for beginners, and B, I don't really know weak auras that in depth. I know enough to get myself by, and that's all you really need. That's it for this guide. I hope you found it informative. If you have comments, suggestions, thoughts or feedback, feel free to rate my videos and leave a comment. It really helps. Also, I suggest subscribing to catch these guides as soon as they come out. Thank you very much for watching and best of luck with your new UI.